I felt like I probably answered like that first question way too. No, no, that's great. But like, uh, I mean, yeah. Listen, look, uh, got my back on the ropes. I don't make this bread, then I'm probably toast. I can't give up my soul. It is not worth any financial goal. Long story short, uh, probably like the last day of a tournament. I'm on a fast break, you know, I go up for a dunk and somebody takes me out, throws me to the ground, land on my back, and um, the rest of that weekend, kind of was like I shut down. Um, I didn't play, you know, talked to like the, the trainers that were there and they were just like, it's probably just back spasms, don't worry about it. And then, um, you know, when I got back home, got it checked out, went to doctors, and, you know, they said I didn't really have anything to worry about. Took about like a month off, um, did whatever I needed to do, try to come back again, and still had the same pain. And it kind of just persisted throughout the summer and, and then all throughout like my first half of my junior year. So that was tough playing through that at that time of my life because that was also like a transitional time. And you know, that's kind of uh, a time period where like I was growing into my role a bit more as a leader on my high school team. And um, halfway through that year, I mean, my back just gave in. I just couldn't do it anymore. It was just bad. I was out for about like 10 months, um, you know, and then around the time that I was getting ready to come back <clears throat> to play for my senior season, you know, I committed here. I, I kind of appreciated the confidence that they had in me, even though, you know, I was injured and, um, you know, I was still coming back a little bit. But uh, they, this was actually my first offer my freshman year. and like. You know, uh, the staff kind of stayed solid with me, so played through my senior year, coming back a little bit. Still had a lot of challenges, still was very difficult. I went into freshman season coming here with that injury already and it not really going away, despite, you know, me trying to do whatever I did in the, uh, in the summer for it. And, you know, as I was playing through it, had a lot of difficulties, was really struggling to like, you know, get through everything. And then probably around like late February, um, it was just right before we played Notre Dame. I'm um, in a practice, stopped really hard. I heard a pop in my hip. And um, from there, I was kind of just like, you know, not really sure what I had to do, what was really going on. Um, and, and to be honest, because I wasn't really playing as much, I didn't know how much I was really hurt. So, um, get to the end of the season, and I'm trying to get ready for um, the new season by just like working out in the summer, and I figured out that, you know, I had torn my labrum in my hip. And then from there, just, you know, kind of had to restart again. So as I was doing that and, you know, just kind of uh, following my rehab, my rehab plan for uh, recovering with my hip, my back was still bothering me. So I ended up getting another MRI for my back and, uh, you know, tried to figure out what was going on there to really just get rid of it once and for all, especially since I was already out for that season um, last year. And, um, they told me that my uh, disc in my back was degenerative. And it was kind of at that moment, um, not really at that particular moment, but from there I thought about it for like a month, you know, and I, I was still going through rehab and I was just thinking about the fact that like, I was knowingly gonna put myself in a position where, you know, my back was gonna be hurting more than it needed to by playing basketball. And um, what was really challenging about all that was just thinking about how, you know, um, I was kind of holding on to something that I knew wasn't good for me anymore. And um, I feel like the biggest challenge was definitely finally letting go, you know, especially after all that I um, fought through with my back, you know, previously. But uh, yeah, just thinking about my long-term health and thinking about, you know, me doing what's best for me to be um, not only healthy, but successful I'm down the line is what really drove me to, you know, um, seek a medical disqualification. So. How long did you have that mental kind of battle for where it's basketball on this side? And it's yeah, I, I mean, honestly, 
still goes on today. You know, it's, there's definitely remnants from it, remnants of it. You know, um, it doesn't just, you know, happen overnight. Of course, right when it started, when I initially got injured my sophomore year, it was, it was probably a lot more difficult than it is now, you know, but um, I definitely feel like, especially since it's just things that, you know, kind of do affect my everyday life. I have to make sure that I'm always doing things that, you know, are helpful for my back and my hip, you know, so that I don't, you know, wake up one day when I'm 50 and like hate myself for what I didn't do in the past, you know. Do you have any people that kind of mentored you through this process, gave you some um, guidance? Yeah, a lot of people. I mean, of course, teammates, of course, family, you know, um, of course, uh, coaches, you know, all the people that I'm surrounded by. Um, I feel like one of the things that really helped me a lot, you know, through all this was just my faith. You know, like what I put my faith in really guided me through that because um, there was times where things just did feel hopeless, you know, and like there was nothing that, you know, one person could say or one person could do. And it was really what, what I put my faith in that guided me through that, you know. Now, who is Jonathan Cabongo now? That's a good question. I feel like Jonathan Cabongo now was the same person, minus basketball. I feel like there was a lot to me that people probably didn't even know because basketball took a lot of the spotlight. You know, um, I'm, I'm, I'm a guy that's very interested in um, creative writing. I make a lot of music myself. Um, I'm a lot of, I'm, in, I'm into a lot of, um, you know, just literature and stuff like that. I really enjoy reading. Um, and I'm also into just like, things that pertain to like, you know, my kind of struggles that I've dealt with, you know, in terms of like mental health. I'm always trying to learn about things like that and just like, you know, wellness and like, um, yeah, just like, you know, people taking care of themselves emotionally, physically, spiritually, whatever it is. I'm very intrigued by, you know, anything that could do that, so. Yeah, so what, what is Hokies helping Hokies heal and how did that help you out? Um, so that was kind of a program that was put together for uh, athletes that experienced an injury, that overcame it themselves, um, who actually, you know, got together and reached out to other athletes that were hurt. And they just, you know, offered to be mentors and, you know, guide them through it, help them, you know, just stay, you know, honestly, mentally healthy throughout the whole process. So um, that was something that I was a part of that, you know, uh, I was actually a mentee last year. Um, I only had one meeting, but, um, it, it was definitely something that was that was helpful in the moment and, and something that I, I did feel inspired to do myself. So um, yeah, I definitely plan in the future, you know, to embrace a role as a as a mentor and and just talk through, you know, overcoming injury with any athlete that's going through it. Um, because I, I definitely do feel like, you know, that dialogue with somebody else who can relate to you, you know, who who actually cares too is very important. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that, and I'm hoping that you know I could have an impact in some way. How big of a issue is mental health in sports? How I feel like you know there's a stigma behind it. You know, you have to be tough and all that stuff. But everybody, I feel like everybody, you know, has their mental struggles, and you know, you don't know what somebody's going through off the court, off the field. So, you know somebody having a breakdown, somebody, you know, um, not being able to just cope with something isn't just a sign of their weakness because their only problems aren't on the court. You know, some people may be dealing with some, some, some huge losses outside of the game that, you know, are, are probably, you know, going to affect anybody that way. And I definitely feel like, you know, that's something that, um, you know, it, it doesn't really get spoken about a lot. But I see how, you know, we're kind of moving into a better space with it. And I think that's important for athletes because, you know, you want to take care of that the right way. You know, you don't want it to be something you ignore and then, you know, you're 30 years old and you don't know how to handle problems that you developed through your sport. So, um, yeah. Whole life I grinded on course, then came the injuries, mission aboard. I know I got more store, I can't be killing myself for sport. I hated growing up poor, used to think pleasure depended on 